child of living in the gay capital of the Western world. <laughs> systems that you can see through their works. It's in their art. They don't make this stuff up. It's tell people about it. So Johnson wants to say that the only naughty stuff is corny. Well, then quit doing the symbols. In fact, the next symbol is the foulest, the most evil of all symbols in the occult world. There is nothing that can even come close. It is known as the hexagram. It is the six-pointed star with a circle surrounding it. It is this symbol that must be used during high ceremonial magic or high ceremonial witchcraft when you are summoning up demons to this plane of existence. showed Disney, pencil in hand, at work as an animator. In fact, he played no part in drawing any of the classic Disney films. here. I am a creation of Ernie Kovacs and I was the first poet that Bob Holman ever saw. You'll notice my nice smoking jacket and my eyebrows and my bottle glasses that I can't see all of. And all the backgrounds of all these people and all the occult systems that you can see through their works. And my martini. We, we don't make this stuff up, we see it, and then we tell people about it. Because now, so if I, Beyonce wants to say that the, the Illuminati stuff is corny, well then quit doing the symbols. In fact, I'll show you some of the symbols from her new video. The, 
the inscription, the dedication, and the poem to Wednesday Kennedy that Bob has, uh, has written in his new book. Thank God he's above the title. That, that looks Whisper. good, Doctor. So it's war. I'm off to the battlefield. No, no, Doctor, that's for the racetrack. Racetrack? Well, what am I doing here? So it's war. I'm off to the battlefield. No, no, Doctor, that's for the racetrack. Racetrack? Well, what am I doing here? If you will all stop his crash. Oh no, well, we may have a horse race. Horses are back at the starting point. Shut up! Mother tongue doesn't mean anything to these people since there are so many languages around. Instead, the closest they have to a mother tongue is that they own a language. The way that you own. Bob's talking about the. Um Aboriginals. But the funny thing is, I was going to call my book 21st Century Showgirl Black on the Inside. And uh, I, I changed my mind because I, I knew nobody would buy it and the whole PC brigade would attack me. You know, I took enough guts just self publishing. And I, I, you know, I couldn't deal with another attack. The spirit songs are sung in a language that only spirits understand. So the person who's speaking them doesn't know what it means. They just have learned this and they sing for the spirits. I would no longer be the woman in search of a revolution. I would reinvent myself as wife and mother. The social sanctity of marriage would bring me back in from the fringes. I would at last become the sort of woman that my mother could relate to. <laughs> the poet was a last peep into the life that I was living. as close as we can come, but it's, it's not an ecstatic God is speaking through me, it's their gift in the language they don't speak. But when languages die, they, parts of them, get a, a crew in the, uh, in the spirit songs. At that stage, I didn't know that my great-great-grandmother was Octavia Hamilton or, you know, Mrs. Eliza Moon. Miss Octavia Hamilton, Madame Schluter, Miss Lorette, Monsieur Emile Coulon. They did a lot of gigs together. Star Theatre. Oh, in the lyrics she says, while this happens, is I'm a star. Alistair Crowley talked about this upcoming age that we are currently in, called the Aeon of Horus, the crown and conquering child. He said that every man and woman is a star. And then Beyonce shows us that she's a, she, says, she says, I'm a star, and does the 666 hand. Also, Crowley was also known as the Great Beast 666. Octavia, my love, where art thou? Octavia Hamilton was a contralto who flourished in Melbourne in the late 1850s and through the 1860s. She had several children to unknown fathers, shacked up with a gent above a wine shop, 
and made her husband pay for it. She was looked upon generally as a scandalous figure and a model of what was wrong with professionals, as stage folk were then called. When I dug into the census of 1841, I found something interesting. She was 15 years old when her future husband, Augustus Graham Moon, was lodging with the family. The only lodger. Well, slap me happy if they didn't get married that very year. Mr Moon must have had his way with Octavia under her father's roof. That's gumption. And all these years I'd have been feeling sorry for hard done by Mr Moon. Was Octavia, Francis Eliza Scrivener, really Melbourne's op operatic tart in sheaf? Or was her behaviour a long campaign of revenge? I'll never know. She's hard to find. Almost impossible. The only route I have open to that little, to the little red corvette that resides in my brain is the tarmac road of her daughter's descendant. Weddings. Let's bite her. Her lips with her own teeth. Subway. Black. Teeth. 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 Wedding. Hi, darling. Are you the cat? That's right. Good on you. Off we go. Off to the airport. Victoria Hamilton, Madame Schruta, Miss Lorette, Monsieur Emile Coulon. They did a lot of gigs together. Star Theatre. First. I'm tired of living in the gay capital of the Western world. <laughs> What's that circle in the star? What's that? fantastic fun to be had in just watching people. You look at their faces, what they're doing as they walk along, and what they're wearing. The variety of fashions today is quite stunning, as reporter Wednesday Kennedy found out. You have a very individual style. Would you ever consider changing your style? Yeah, I do regularly. I um, think it's really important to, to change your style and, like, to develop rather than be stagnant. How do you choose the clothes that you wear? Oh, well, I have a different style for every mood I'm in. Uh, one day I might get up and feel depressed, so I wear all black. Oh, 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 it's my dick. Dreams come true. 
that you were star, star, star. Gosh, if only we knew what that really meant. Star. The pinnacle. And its meaning? The pinnacle is a pagan religious icon. Devil worship. I got oh. unknown artist. You see, what they do is they draw pictures of you and they either put a spell in that picture or they do something with it. They take it home and they degrade it. Um, art has been a big part of my uh, magic or the magic that was um, done on me. You belong with me. So let your mind run. Advertisement. Desperately seeking Wednesday. I met you with the American church. Oh, Who are you? I don't have your phone number. Ring me. Anything oh. I rang you immediately. With my heart thumping in my chest, the wet at the end. Immediately, with my heart thumping in my chest, the wet at the entire, the wet at the entire English-speaking community in Paris was witness to our dangerous liaison. <laughs> How many Wednesdays are there in Paris? As many as are in December. Oh, one week from marriage. I was already a potential adulteress. My name is so Roman, so epic, so historic, so made for a bigger stage than her life could contain. Let us hope I can uncover a picture of the woman that was the original O.A. Oh my god, this is another, um, another Wonderworld story. You know me in Roman times. And see, this is interesting because th they do this. They dress you up in past times and I don't know, they want to evoke. Maybe my bloodline goes back even further than it. <laughs> you know, they w or whatever, they want to evoke the spirit of that time and, you know, take you back to the orgy or something. And so they dress you up or they do a painting of you as like, you know, a Greek goddess or, you know, a Roman emperor or whatever. It's all part of the programming, right? It's all part of the bubble, where you're in a bubble and nothing's quite real. And But it's also part of the time machine, you know, the past and the present sort of... I mean, my concept of time is just, you know... It's a little bit different, I think, to some other people. This is, um, you know, one of the publicity shots. We're on a fire engine, which is funny when you consider how fire, firemen and fire engines came up in my story after September 11th. It's almost like firemen are part of the um, mind control. And a lot of things, a few of the things I said in my book about firemen, I later saw in a... Um, Almost exact same line scripted in the Sex and the City story. So that's how you know that it's programming. You know, when, it's, when it comes up, you know, when you think of, oh, I'm going to call my book 21st Century Showgirl, and six months later Kylie Minogue has a showgirl tour. Or, uh, you know, you, you've got these observations about firemen, and after the fact, you see the Sex and the City episode and they're almost saying the same thing. And then you just realize, oh my God, this is dull programming. Dull programming. There she is. Look at the look on my face. It's almost like I know 
I sort of like, I, I, I look really apprehensive, like, I know what I'm in for. Fast and tight, it's going to be a bumpy ride, honey. Here, this is when I was sent to England to do stories. And um, I did a story on the Wedgwood factory and the Wedgwood Museum, which is interesting. I also did a story on the Loch Ness Monster. Um, I can't remember all my stories. But I do remember, I did a story on a castle. Castle. Now, very rude, those people in the castle. They probably ate babies. Look at me, hostess with the mostess. I think I'm on one of those quiz shows. You know, I'm making fun, really, but... There you go. I'm making fun and they're making fun at me. Wedgwood. I've still got that Wedgwood um, saucer they gave me. Anything your heart desires will come to you. It will yeah. come to you. And last but not least, you know, there's the front page of the Daily Mirror, Sydney TV crew arrest. We were arrested outside, we weren't arrested, we were questioned. Outside Charles and Di's house. Seen nabbed outside Di's home. And, you know, it's just interesting that Molly does his lolly on the same page. Because, you know, Molly's been mentioned a couple of times in regards to this, this ring. Once by Frank Arena and nextly by um, Fiona Barnett. I mean, I don't know anything about him. I've never met him. All I've done is share a front page with him. But, uh, you know, it's, it's all a bit six degrees of separation when I start, or two degrees. If your heart is in your too extreme when you... Desire to be taken seriously in, as an actress. She said she did not want stardom. I don't want to become a celebrity, she said. She shunned the high profile which came with the job in Simon Townsend's Wonderworld. Working on Wonderworld was good experience, but I left as soon as I learned all I could, she said. The show taught me discipline. It was an incredible chance to work with professionals and learn how to direct and produce stories for television under enormous pressure. When Wednesday left Wonderworld, she returned to return to acting. She discovered she had become an identity. Although I had done a lot of fringe theatre, it was difficult to be taken seriously as an actress when you have been labelled a celebrity, Wednesday said. She had no choice but to get back to basics. I returned to square one and finished my acting apprenticeship, she said. It all came as a bit of a shock to Wednesday. I thought I would have more access to roles after working on television, but I soon discovered there is only one way to go if you want to be an actress, she said. Wednesday has toned down on her zany image. Comedy is definitely my forte, but that is not what I want to do, she said. I can't see myself playing a completely straight character or a sex symbol, she added because that programming hadn't kicked in yet. But I will always be happy with any role. In between acting jobs, Wednesday can be seen singing in bent pop band The Fish That John West Rejected in Inner City Nightclubs. Interesting. There you are in black and white. I said no. I didn't want to be a star. And that's when they followed me. And that's, that's really where my, ta I don't know, that's where my targeting started because I didn't take the star, man. I didn't take the star. See you tomorrow.
say that the streets are for dreaming now. Man's love dragnets and the ghost in our memories. I want a piece of the action anyhow. I'll sing Matilda. I'll sing Matilda you Oh, I'll sing Matilda with me You can ask him, sailor Are the keys from the jailer Are the old men in wheelchairs now Matilda's a defendant She killed about a hundred And she follows wherever you may go I'll sing Matilda I'll sing Matilda you Oh, I'll sing